oh, hello, the hour is upon us. Will the revelation be that this new magic set is nothing but devastation? Allow me to enlighten you with the top five cards from Hour of Devastation for Modern. And guess what? It's a five-way tie. That's right. I can't decide which of these five cards is more delicious for Modern. And they happen to be not only the best for that format, but the best for Legacy as well. The five best for Commander. And also Tiny Leaders, Prismatic, Tribal. In fact, every format is thrilled to see these five cards from Hour of Devastation. <gasps> it's Jace's defeat! Liliana's defeat! Oh my! Chandra's defeat! Yep, she's toast! Oh! Nissa's defeat! Ashaya, no! Oh yes! And it's Thor's defeat! No, no, is Gideon more like Iron Man? Iron Man's defeat! No, I was right the first time. Thor. Thor's defeat. Either way, the Gatewatch is defeated. Oh, <laughs> this set is hot, steaming bulk for modern. I mean, seriously, it's like really hard to scrounge up any good cards at all. But the Gatewatch falls. I'm happy. Look at him up there. <laughs>now before I get to the full list of the top five cards from Hour of Devastation that are likely to have play in modern, I have not one but two honorable mentions. Unlike sets in the past, which had obvious contenders such as Fatal Push or Prized Amalgam or a host of other cards that seemed to just scream that they would make a dent in the format, here we're looking for a little subtlety and a little mercy. Oketra's Mercy, in fact. Oketra's Last Mercy is a sorcery for two white and one mana of any color that reads, with sweet simplicity, your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Not a steep price to pay to restart your life total. Three mana and then having lands not untap next turn? What role does this have in modern? Well, burn is always going to be a constant. Be it mono red or naya or dirty black rat Actos. There's always going to be burn decks keeping everyone honest. Being able to reset your life total to 20 is great defense against burn decks, who are likely going to run out of gas long before being able to get you on the ropes a second time. Yes, this is a sorcery, definitely one of the points against it. And yes, it is in white, meaning the decks most likely to need help against burn are not likely going to have access to double white, which is why this is only an honorable mention. Still, I can see some white splash decks, especially control builds, making this an endless headache for burn and aggro opponents. So there's a chance this will see play in a few sideboards. Our second honorable mention is another godly sorcery, Hazaret's Undying Fury. For two red and four mana of any color, shuffle your library, then exile the top four cards. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Where does this go and what will it do in modern? Well, probably not much. It's a potential storm engine that might give the deck an added push, which is something storm wants right now. The question is, do modern storm players want mind's desire enough? that they're willing to take a watered-down version of it. Either way, this card is exceptionally narrow, and the only chance it has in modern is in those storm decks. All right, let's begin the real list with a real interesting card. Anytime you start disrupting the placement of counters, that's when you're going to get the potential for shenanigans, and shenanigans is what modern is all about. So, let's take a look at the lovely yet lonely Solemnity. Solemnity is too white and one for an enchantment that reads, players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. At a converted mana cost of three, using this to disrupt cards such as Aether Vial means it's just too slow. So I don't think we're going to see this as a kind of sideboard hate option, but instead we're going to see it as a sideboard answer to, well, obviously Infect springs to mind, but also I think 
think this might be made use of in interesting combos with everything from Thing in the Ice to Geralf's Messenger, where if you've got a sack outlet, you've pretty much won. Combos really nicely with Phyrexian Unlife, too. And decks like Ad Nauseam are at the very least going to do a lot of testing with Solemnity. I think this is a great opportunity for the Johnnies of Magic to maybe stroll away from Commander for a bit and see what they can brew up for us in Modern. Now, number four is a card that probably only has a home in sideboards. However, if I'm right, most green decks are going to want this in their sideboard regardless. And that is a card that we've already mentioned in our Popper review, a common known as Life Goes On. Life Goes On made my list of top Popper cards as well, but the applications to Modder run just as strong. Just as with Popper, the card we are comparing this with is feed the clan. Life goes on as a mere one green for an instant that reads, you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, gain eight instead. I don't mean to repeat myself, but once players test this in place of feed the clan, they'll be looking to answer for themselves whether they'd rather cast on one mana for a little less life, or perhaps if they'd rather rely on morbid instead of ferocious for that extra life trigger. And thus only time will tell how much of a showing this card will really have. As far as I'm concerned, I think feed the clan loses here. Life goes on and its morbid-like trigger is just so much better than ferocious, and better priced as well. Toss feed the clan and the trade binder. But I don't want to look at any more cards that made my popper list, so let's move up to peasant. That's right, here's an uncommon that makes a claim to modern fame, and that card of course is claim to fame. Claim to Fame is a split card which costs a single black to return target creature card with converted mana, two or less, from your graveyard to the battlefield. Its aftermath, Fame, costs a red and one mana of any color for target creature to get plus two, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. But I don't even care about the aftermath. Claim has all the fame I need by itself. One black to resurrect a creature? With converted mana cost two or less right to the battlefield? Sign me up, that's two thirds of the creatures in modern. Goyf, Grimflayer, Voice of Resurgence, Snapcaster Mage, can you imagine snapping back something from the graveyard? Chump blocking with Snapcaster, and then claiming Snapcaster from the graveyard back to the battlefield and triggering it again? My gosh! Not to mention cards like Death's Shadow until it gets banned, of course, and hey, look at him! Flip walkers like Tiny Jace! This card, when used correctly, can essentially be copies 5 through 8 of some of the more common creatures of modern. Alright, coming in at number 2 is a weird kind of mirror of claim to fame, a card that essentially is doing the opposite, and it ties into my joke at the beginning about the defeat of the Gatewatch. That's right, one of those defeat cards actually did make the list. Can you guess which one? It's Liliana's defeat. This card is intense. It should go camping, it is so intense. For a single black mana, Liliana's defeat destroys target black creature or target black planeswalker. If the permanent was a Liliana planeswalker, her controller gains three life. In the same sense that claim hits so much of modern, let's be honest, black creatures make up a huge amount of modern's threats. From Tassiger to Prized Amalgam to Gurmang Dang Angler, and of course, of course, Death's Shadow until it gets banned. Oh, and Liliana of the Veil. That's right, one of the toughest lock conditions to overcome. Liliana of the Veil gets hit for only one black mana thanks to this card, and that removal would be totally on flavor. Wow. Problem with this card is obviously that it's at sorcery speed. But even though it's not an instant, this card has application and serves as a solid answer to some of the biggest problems you might face in the format, and I'm all for it. So what is the card most likely to see play in Modern from Hour of Devastation? No, it's not the horse. Stop asking. Why, it's Runamap, uh, Ru Runamip X, Ramoon, Ram why couldn't they call it Rune Map Excavator? Well, whatever it is, that's what it is. Ramunap Excavator is one green and two for a Naga Cleric with the simple yet beautiful text that reads, you may play land cards from your graveyard. However you want to pronounce its name, it should really just be called Crucible of Worlds on a Stick. 
Crucible is currently a $60 and up card. Thank you very much, Commander Johnnies, but it currently sees some modern play. A few lantern control builds have been known to run a single copy, as do a few control builds. But this requires green mana, and don't expect Azurius players to start splashing green just to save on uh, some green. I think the fact that this is already a creature means we're actually going to see it take advantage of its 2-3 body, and that's through interactions with collective company, and collected company builds are already established. Whether it's mono green stompy running company or Selesnia company decks, either is going to enjoy this for recurring ghost quarters, tectonic edges, and grabbing it out to have it join the fray. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. What cards from Hour of Devastation do you think will see the most play in Modern? Some from this list or some that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.